everybody, this is Presto. Corporal Massage. And you are listening to episode, hold on, 58 of the Nintendads podcast. <laughs> um, this is our RPG episode, um, sort of part of the season finale of our April Adventures, um, which is... Something we've been doing this month, where we're talking about RPGs, a lot of Dungeons and Dragons themed stuff, sort of nerding out at full volume. Full volume! Oh god, that was at full volume, wasn't it? Um, yeah, so, here we go. Uh, but before before we jump into our RPG adventures, this, this episode's gonna be about half and half, actually, because um, we were supposed to do it last week... And then it got pushed back twice because we rolled nat ones on uh, on our scheduling checks, and uh, and then a whole bunch of news came out, um, which is probably good that we pushed it back because there's lots of important, significant news that we would want to include in this episode that happened um, between when we originally had it scheduled. So we're gonna do a whole lot of news, and then we're gonna do a whole lot of RPG stuff. So here we go. Um, to start Shing's off, um, do you want to do news first? Or do you want to do what we're playing first, Corp? What we're playing. What we're playing. What are you playing? Gee, what, what have you been game. doing? What have you been doing with your free time? Just slashing <laughs> about? <laughs> I'm my, in every moment of my entire free time to the absolute dismay of Lady Sage has been trying to write a campaign that makes sense and is successful for the end of April for April's Adventures D&D campaign that we're going to be doing. But we'll talk about that later. So, yeah, I've been doing a lot of my free time has been doing a lot of a lot of writing. But I have been playing Tiny Tina's. Hell yeah, Tiny Tina's Tiny Tina's. The game that I don't think either of us really saw coming. As something we, that was going to suck our free time away. Presto has shared the stream. Yo, I shared it. Um, yeah. I have been playing also Tiny Tina's. Um, believe it or not, I've been playing some uh, Monster Hunter Rise. I know that probably comes as a shock to most Can of you. Um, confuses most people. Uh, no, I started. I started doing the event or the uh, arena quests and the uh, challenge quests, which are sort of like pre-made things. And uh, <laughs> hey, Bernie's in the chat. Welcome. So, um, so, for those of you who don't know, um, Big Burn Bow uh, is my father, and he looks like Mario. <laughs> for lack of a better term. And he went ahead and he shipped me uh, his... Oh, you got it already! Captain Mario figurine to add to my collection. Where did he so, get that from? I don't know. You'll have to ask him. I really don't know. No, and, it, ha it needs to remain a mystery. And Cat Mario. <laughs> which is cool. So they have been added to our repertoire next to the Mario hat. <laughs> um, cool. Uh, yeah, I've been playing Tiny Tina's. I've been playing Monster Hunter. If you haven't gone through the event or the uh, the challenge quests and the arena quests, they're shorter. They're a great place to try out new weapons. It's amazing. Um, I'm also playing this for the first time. Sorry, audio only people. Um, Super Mario 3D World plus bowser's fury yo tony mb what's up um and the parents in the chat yeah all the parents in the chat <laughs> um but guess what corporal guess what for the what's millionth that? time on this show i'm gonna make this psa you see this game this isn't my game i don't own this game this is a library game this is a game that i rented for zero dollars and zero cents from my local library. And y'all need to remember that. Go to your library. They have games. They have like all the games. I just wanted to play this with my little guy. See if he liked it. And guess what? He does. And so we're playing it. 
for free for zero dollars. Oh my god, and my grandma is watching the stream, so I can't say any. Now I have to behave. <laughs> it's gonna be a challenge. Um. Uh. So yeah, that's mostly what. Also, 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 I'm playing a little Street Fighter because, first of all, hashtag Capcom creators. Um. Actually, wait, hold on. Can I can I load this up just for this section? Yes, Capcom creators. I'm going to put this in the section in the top corner just while I'm talking about this. So the new season of Street Fighter has begun um, between now and May 11th. There is a free demo for Street Fighter on Steam and PlayStation 4. Um, <laughs> she said hi really loud like you can hear. Hi, Grandma! Um, yeah, Street Fighter Street Fighter 5 has a demo on PlayStation and on PC that you can play now through May 11th. And if you own any version of the game, all of the DLC characters are unlocked. Which is a huge deal, because there's like 30 DLC characters that I don't own, because um, I never really got into it. So I am... Rodrin. We're butchering your name, but thanks for liking the stream and sharing. Um, I'm having a blast playing Street Fighter V, trying all these characters that I never thought I would. So, that's pretty fun. Um, what are you, what are you drinking? You son of a, you put Mountain Dew in the show notes for what I'm drinking, because you know I hate Mountain Dew, I hate you so much. In the show notes. So for those of you who've been following us for a long time, take a shot. <laughs> I usually will write the show notes. Recently, Presto's been writing a lot of the show notes, but every once in a while, I get back into putting the show notes. I like writing the show notes. I think it helps to streamline things. But I use our show notes to take jabs at everyone else who can see them. So behind the screen, there's always some sort of, of, of right or left hook that goes in here. So in the section in the show notes, it says, what are you drinking? There's literally... Presto, drinking Mountain Dew. If you ever, if you ever see me look off to the side, laugh, and then not say anything, it's because we're shit talking each other in the show notes. <laughs> so I am drinking uh, Samuel Adams Summer Summer Pack. So this Ooh. is currently the Tropical Wheat Ale. Yummy! I'm, I, I'm drinking tonight. I am drinking. I am now drinking the easy <laughs> the easy ringer session IPA. Ooh, come on, camera. Um, by Victory. Um, I've been digging. I, I mean, I've always liked Victory. I like Sour Monkey. Me and Golden Monkey have a bit of a checkered past. Um, but I like this one a lot. That's probably why I have it up here. It's light. It's fruity. That's that's all I drink. So. Cheers to adventure. Mm. Cheers. And now the news. Um, so, so this is going. There's a lot of news. There's a lot of news. We're going to try to move quickly. Um, Splatoon 3 has a release date. And it is September 9th. So let me just say, they, un, without any notice, without any publicity stunt, drops a video. Which, I guess in itself is a, a publicity stunt on its own. But it was just like, oh, here's some Splatoon 3 footage. Enjoy. And most of the, you know, publicity world was like, oh, thanks for the morsel. And didn't really pay much attention to it until the literal last half second of the video where they released an announcement of the release date, which, what? It's usually not how you do it for one of your main mm -hmm. IPs. On Facebook, they put the release date in the caption for the post before I even watched the video. 
said, oh, no. here's new Splatoon footage of gameplay. Splatoon 3 is releasing on uh, 9.9. I'm like... Wait, what? Okay. Fast and loose. Um, now, there is a reason for this. There is a reason. And the reason is, originally, Xenoblade Chronicles 3 was supposed to come out in the late summer, early fall. And Splatoon 3 was supposed to come out in the summer. They flip-flopped the release dates. Because right before... I don't know if it was the same day or the day before. Um, I think it was the day before. Before they announced the Splatoon release date, they said, Good news! Xenoblade Chronicles 3 release date has been moved up to, I think they moved it up to August or July. Um, and then the next day, Splatoon 3 release date is revealed to be in, like, the 11th inning of summer. I consider yeah. summer to be over in September. It, it is. Technic it is. Technically, it technically, it's not over until September 21st, the autumnal equinox. Um, and apparently that's the rules we're playing by. Now... Splatoon 3, this whole episode, honestly, could be me talking about Splatoon 3, but I'm going to try to not have it be that way. Um, so they showed an entire match, beginning to end, of Splatoon 3. There is new title cards, so you can have a title. There's new customizations. They showed off the new one of the new weapons, the bow. So it's a bow that shoots three arrows. The arrows stick flash for a second, and then explode. Um, there's new specials. Curious amount of specials look to be defensive, which was has historically not been the case. There's a, a shield uh, special. There's a vacuum cleaner special. There's a special that lets you sort of Spider-Man your way around the level. Um, and then, of course, there's some new sub-weapons that we saw, new bombs, new little doodads. Um, and, I really hate to say it, but even after watching this new footage with new specials and one new weapon, if you showed it to me and I wasn't paying attention, and it's a, a new level, of course, um, it looks mechanically almost indistinguishable from Splatoon 2. Now, in, in going down this rabbit hole of breaking this down, I did realize that there are two new movement options. Yeah, yeah. There's two new movement options in Splatoon 3. The squid roll, which allows you to change direction and gives you some type of invulnerability or reflect properties or defensive, I don't know. And then there's the squid, I think it's called the squid rush, where you can swim up surfaces faster. I, I, I'm worried. I'm worried for Splatoon this 3. This entire game since it's uh there's a, a fly in here distracted me since uh uh it's a initial like announcement has always felt like a splatoon 2 dlc mm. where nintendo took an actual dlc for legend of, Z of zelda and tried to turn it into a full-size game splatoon 3 was created as a, its own standalone game and it feels nothing more than a DLC. Yeah. I am... Scenarios I don't know if I agree with. I am very relieved, even though I want Splatoon 3 right now, I am incredibly relieved because Sunbreak got its release date, June 30th, and I was like, oh god, that's like almost dead center of this in the summer if Splatoon 3 comes out, like, July, I'm going to be, like, I'm in trouble. Um, yeah. So I am glad that I'm going to have some breathing room with Sunbreak before Splatoon 3. Um, also, speaking of DLC, um, the Octo Expansion DLC, which is the single-player expansion to Splatoon 2, um, which was previously, I think, like, 20 bucks, is now included with the Nintendo Service Online Expansion Pack. So another little... They're slowly stacking up little tiny reasons to pay $50 a year. 
Um, I am on my friend's account. Shout out, Orzo. You're the best. Um, I am on my friend's account because he's like, we have an extra spot if you want it. So I am on his account. So I am playing some of the 64 games. Me and the little man beat Mario 64 recently, which is a lot harder than I remember it being. Um, but yeah, uh, I still don't know if it's at the point that I would pay for it. Uh, but our next piece of news, maybe it will be. An SO expansion that will include, oh, the, uh, the Game Boy Advance and uh, Nintendo Service Online. I still don't think so. You don't think it's going to happen, or do you don't think it's worth it even with this? I don't think it's worth it even with this. Hmm. So... <sighs> So if you if you didn't read the 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 leak was that Nintendo uh, Game Boy and Game Boy Advance games are coming to the online service expansion pack. So if you have the expansion pack service, you're going to get access to potentially a lot of Game Boy titles and Game so Boy Advance titles. On its face value, that is exciting. That's right there. There's a lot of really cool old Game Boy Advance games. And a lot of that old retro games is very much our childhood and our nostalgia. This is the Nintendads. We are dads who happen to play games. In this day and age, because our podcast is geared towards adult gamers, where our time is limited and our availability to play games is very small I don't see a huge market of us who are going to buy this service for the retro titles unless you're in a very specific niche there are so many games that are currently sitting on all of our shelves that we have purchased and still haven't touched or played why would now the only aspect of this that is that is good is the fact that it's on their service so you automatically get it for free as a part of <laughs> as a part of paying for the platform so maybe if you're not looking to spend any other money but mm, i i still don't know if this is this is nintendo service online selling you know why nintendo ads all over the country are going to get the expansion after this comes out. Tell me. For the main reason, the main utility that I am using the expansion pack for, so I can have my kids play the games I played growing up. So, yes. That, to uh, me, is probably... Having a access big to your old games that you grew up with and being able to share those memories with your kids from a Nintendo dad's standpoint, from a father standpoint, I yeah. Yes. Because I'll be but, damned if the first video games my kid is going to play is like Fortnite or Roblox or this like diet garbage that they call it video games these days old man yells at cloud dag nabbit get off my lawn you're gonna play crappy 32-bit things you're lucky you don't have to play in the car in the dark when the street lights go oh, by and that's the only time on. you can see what what you're doing <laughs> i'm pretty sure little red's first game was mario on the wii but mario nonetheless oh, that's fine so, hey what do you call an illegally parked frog Oh my god, Brian's in chat, isn't he? Toad. Brian, Brian, <laughs> Brian likes the stream. Brian, thanks for coming in. Welcome, Brian. What do you call a legally parked... Oh, it's a... It's a good one. I like that one. Toad. I like that one. Um... So yeah, uh, now, some of my... Some of my favorite games are are on uh are on Game Boy and Game Boy Advance. Uh my favorite Castlevanias 
Uh, Circle of the Moon is my favorite Castlevania game. It's on Game Boy Advance. Um, you can actually buy it in the Castlevania collection, which is how I would probably play it. Um, but there's a lot of there's a lot of things there. Also, this was the first leak in a while that Nintendo aggressively took down content, like re- like like within a couple hours, which is how you no, know it's really? it's legit. Yeah, Nick Yeti was tagging me in posts. And that like being deleted. And then I would go and I'm like, what was this? It's gone now. What what <laughs> nefarious what nefariousness have you gotten me involved in? And he's like, Oh, NSO NS he loves his acronyms, NSO GBA link. And I'm like, What? Oh god, Nintendo Service Online, Game Boy Advance, yeah, okay. Um so I think that's I think the leak is legit. I think it's gonna happen. I think it's kind of ballsy for them to drop a bunch of Nintendo or uh, Game Boy games when the uh, the pickings for Nintendo sixty four games still looking real slim, like like real real slim. They need to fill that out. There's there's plenty of N sixty four games. I know it's probably a licensing issue, but like, dang, get them up there. <laughs> Sonic Origins was announced, um, and I actually don't recall the release date. Have you, you've heard of this, yeah? Yes. Sonic oh, Origin, this is... June 23rd. This is, one of the ones I, this is one of the ones I sent you. I am optimistically excited about this. Bless your, oh. bless your heart. Um, Excuse me. I have two, I have two slight bones to pick with this. Love Sonic. Love Sonic 1, 2, 3, and Knuckles. Sonic Spinball, Sonic CD. Had them all, played them all. Great, great stuff. Two problems. They're promoting these as remastered titles, and in no game footage could I tell that they were remastered. Um, I Maybe it's like a sound thing. Maybe it's... Uh, There's hair that's like hanging in my face. Maybe maybe it's more obvious when you play it, like for yourself, that it's remastered. Um, so that's one thing. Remastered. I feel like anytime you change like the font or the color of something, they say it's remastered right. now. Um, that's fine. But Sega is man's best friend. Sega Sega is delisting all the other Sonic games across storefronts. <laughs> Since this has been announced, yeah, I don't, I don't like that. They're they're pulling a Nintendo. That's something that Nintendo would do. I don't like that. That's not cool, Sega. <laughs> Sonic Sonic is usually known for being very cool. This is not cool. <sighs> and I mean, they have a lot to pull because I own I own Sonic One and Two on like. I'm pretty sure four different four different devices or platforms. I have like Mega yeah. Collection, I have it on my phone, I have it on my computer, and I have it on I don't know, my TI eighty three calculator from high school. Um so that I'm not a huge fan of. But I don't know, maybe I'll rent it from the library. Oh, there you go. Um, there is a Streets of Rage live action. Is it a show or a movie? I thought I, it was a show. I thought it was a movie. There's a live action Streets of Rage video thing. Um, that is in. I think they're. I think they just announced that they're making it. They haven't done the casting. They haven't done the filming production yeah. or anything. Um, is it a show? I think it was their way of trying to to gauge the initial reaction. Film. It is a film, and it okay. is with the uh, director of the John Wick movies. Yeah. Which like. Gives it some gravity? Scripted. Scripted Maybe. by John Wick's Derek Kolstad. Yes. 
Love it. That's some of the best ac action, modern action sequences around John Wick. So I'm very excited about that. Um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Shredder's Revenge, new you game. You cannot just blow through that. What? We have been taught. <laughs> it's coming out. There's no details. <laughs> we have been chomping at the bit. If Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge was a bone and we were the dog, there is no marrow left. This is just splinters. Oh, that's a good yes. one. That was a good one. I appreciate that. But my point is, is that I like this is big this is exciting there's still like, so summer I, release it's not a date it's still not a date what is it with it, people these like i feel like every game that i'm looking forward to gets a vague release date for like the first six months like i don't ever remember like when they announce a game they either don't give you a window yeah or they give you a date but now they're just I, like i feel like mm. they, we we'll release is this game games when the weather's we are, warmer. This is the game that we are most excited for to come out, just like Streets of Rage 4. We feel it's going to be in that same vein. We had a lot of fun with uh, the, the DLC launch that we partnered with them for, so I'm very excited to see what they do with this game. I have said on this podcast several times, if you've been listening to us long enough, take a shot, <laughs> that... Um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles side school arcade version game is like one of my favorite childhood memories. So like to re be able to replay this type of game again is exciting. I, I, we've just been wanting more and they've just not give us anything. Well, now we have something. Um, there was a playable demo. So footage came out of the first two levels. A playable demo of those first two levels was at PAX East, which ended okay. yesterday. Um, and they released some, like, behind the, behind the scenes, like, making of stuff. Like, they talked to some of the guys at Dottie Moo saying, like, they're very... They were very inspired by, like, the 90s TV show, um, by the original arcade. Hey, we got your brother making fun of you in the chat. Ah, oh, of course. What's Corporal up, Josh? <laughs> um, Corporal Sausages. So, as long as this comes out well before or well after June 30th, I will be super happy. Yeah. I'm going to play the hell out of it anyway. Um... Corporal also, sausages, sausages. that's that's the, the line. Also, it should be known that they are not giving a release date because they don't have a release date. It was officially stated on Discord by somebody on the development team that because people are like, "Oh, how are you going to say summer and you don't give us a real release date? Just give it to us." And one of the developers said, "We can't give it to you because we don't have it." Um. We are waiting to get approval and a launch window from all these different platforms, and they like to drag their feet when you're an indie developer. It's not like EA. It's not like a big company. Um, they are on the they are the low man on the totem pole. So no no fault of their own is this delayed. Also, this is also being developed. It's dot emu and. Oh, I can't believe... I can't think of it off the top of my head. Um, uh, it's Dot .emu, and it is... Oh my gosh, I can't remember, and I can't find it. It's the same... It's the same... Also, some of the same developers that did uh, the Scott Pilgrim game. Which was good. It had a... a a bad um, online release. And it was but like this that, long. It was like this after long. it got fixed, then it was it was better. Yeah, it was good. Um, there are going to be RPG elements when you play through the story modes. You can level up your character as you see fit, similar to Scott Pilgrim. And then there's yep. going to be an arcade mode, which is just this the classic quarter destroyer. Keep 
keep playing. I'm assuming that that's not going to be the case, though. You're going to have lives, and you're going to have to make it through. Um, gonna, which... Are they going to, like, add a, uh, a coin slot on my Nintendo Switch? <laughs> yeah, here, DLC, the DLC slot. Um, what what character are you... Like, which which character do you usually play in the, uh, in the traditional Turtles arcade games? Ooh. I know who I think you would pick, but you tell me. It's a long time. If you don't know off the top of your head, then you're not. Then it's not. I real. well no because I I usually like Raphael and Leonardo are like my two favorite. So I, I but I don't know which one I played the most in the arcade game. So like if I had to pick now, it would probably just be Raphael. But, I was gonna say I I kind of pegged you for a Leo because you are a Leo. Leonardo, a Leo, I mean that was one of my favorite characters. So, I mean yeah, Leo, Leonardo, Donatello, all day long. I does machines. <laughs> you does machines. <laughs> yeah, Leonardo and Raphael were my, my two favorite. I, I I probably would stick with Leonardo. That's wow. blue. You got the blue. On your, on your on your stuff. I like. I, I got like the, the purple. Sword. I got the purple. We're set. You yeah. already know. You already know Nick Yeti's picking Michelangelo. Yeah. Like that's yeah. just. I'm surprised he didn't have a tattoo of Mikey at this point. <laughs> um, what else? Ah, there was a direct on April 21st, but it was not a Nintendo direct. No, it no, was not. No, sir. It's it was a 28 minute or 27 minute direct for D and D. Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> Dungeons and Dragons direct. So, what is currently going on right now at the airing of this episode is one of the things that was revealed during that direct, and that is they're doing a bunch of voice actors who got <laughs> together who are going to be playing Dungeons and I Dragons. Cry live and they're streaming it i want to uh, be so watching it on. you all are so lucky my commitment to this podcast is greater than my love for brendan lee mulligan dming because that it, it, literally moments before we started this i was watching legends of the multiverse brendan lee mulligan was dming my favorite dm sorry sorry matt mercer you're great but I prefer... Anyway, I was watching it. It's going on right now. I'm amazed that we have anybody in our chat at all because they should be watching that. Just kidding. Um, I, I mean, that's probably why our numbers are so low right now. That's why. That's definitely why. Um, I yeah. want to see a Matt Mercer versus Brendan Lee Mulligan story. That would be interesting. So Brendan Lee Mulligan and Matt Mercer have both been on Critical Role together and they've both been on uh, Fantasy High together. At different really? points, okay. yes. I haven't gotten to either of those points in their respective shows, um, but they are they are friends. Hmm. Oh, Barry Preslord, okay, bye. <laughs> um, yeah, there was a whole bunch of stuff. Spelljammer was the big thing, the new D and D campaign set in space, wild space. So like space pirate themes, new races. Uh, they had some stuff about Baldur's Gate in 2023. They had some new supplies for DMs. They talked about the D&D movie. There's a new Streamline Starter Kit. There's a new expansion for Neverwinter Never Winter MMO. Um, Onslaught is a board game that's coming in October. And Dragonlance, which somebody told me was an original D&D, like, second or third edition campaign uh that's coming in the form of a new campaign or some kind of battle board game or something a whole lot of D stuff if you're into it get excited but corporal speaking speaking just speaking of D, &D just <laughs> i don't know I, I feel like there's there's something that's in the air hold on you gotta coming. roll a performance check eight i failed so you get to say it <laughs> I gotta 
pull out. I got my fancy. You're always on the dice flex. I am I? Can am you I can you tell flex? can you tell who the DM among us is? I mine are from Barnes and Nobles, very reasonably priced in a little plastic container. Mine are forged from metal of Asgard brought into the the ninth realm still covered in blood from forged from a dying star hell Valhalla. you're gonna get us sued by marvel <laughs> so um roll my let's let's roll my performance check see how i do if you get a nat one you get to say nothing uh it's a 16 all right go for it <laughs> so um Oh, but these are heavy. I uh, at the the entire month that we have been rolling through April has been April, April adventures. adventures, as it says at the top of our heads. Um, and April Adventures is dedicated to RPG style games. Every game that we have reviewed, every game that we have given away. Damn yo. Damn yo. Every game, every game that we have featured on this channel have all been an RPG style game. And Dungeons and Dragons is quite arguably the granddaddy of RPG. And so at the end of this month, we are going to go out swinging strong with the Nintendad's D&D campaign. I will be hosting the event as your dungeon master. I'll uh, be dabbling my my feet in in the dungeon master pool. Well, Presto here or here is going to be tortured. Do not by... do not reveal my character. No, do not, not. I'm not... <laughs> I is going to be tortured by my dice. So tune in. On the 30th of April, it's a Saturday. Saturday. So in, lieu, in lieu of our Friday stream, we will not be a fr doing a Friday stream. Melissa, welcome. Uh, we will Melissa. not be doing a Friday stream, but we will be doing a Saturday stream instead at 9 o'clock. We have a, 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 a cast of nine players, or six players, who are going to be joining us. And I will be dungeon mastering, so there will be seven of us on screen. <laughs> it's a big party it for is. our for our first for our first foray into Dungeons and Dragons. We have a full six yep. person group. That's before well, Corporal. There's... That's before Corporal kills anybody off. Of course. <laughs> I mean, everybody was so interested. So to be a part of our Dungeons and Dragons uh, campaign, first off, you had to be in our Discord. It's so before the dungeons, it's Discord, Discord, and and dragons, <laughs> Discord and. <laughs> D and D, the original D is Discord and Degenerates, which is our Discord. So join our Discord so that you can stay up to date with behind the scene news and everything else In that's going fact, on. You can do if you're on Facebook, you can do exclamation point Discord now as a chat command. Yep. Hot damn, so, and it'll give you the information. Although my bot, my Facebook chat bot should be. Every fifteen or twenty minutes, leaving yeah. a thing. I haven't seen it to be honest. I with haven't you. seen it either. What's going on with that chatbot? You're fired. <laughs> I hope what? that it's working. I'm going to try it. April thirtieth. It's a Saturday at nine p.m. Tune in for our very special April Adventures End Stream. It's the last major event of April that we're going to be doing. So tune into that. And be entertained. It's gonna be cool. The the Facebook the Facebook bot took the night off. The command is not working. Okay, sure, that's fine. This is fine. Um, yes. So now smoothly transitioning. Um, now we're actually gonna talk about oh oh no. What D and D game is it? A video game or a tabletop? Martin, we are doing old school five E D and D tabletop styley 
It's uh, going to be a tabletop style. It's going to be a homebrew campaign that I have spent the past couple months writing. This is my first time dungeon mastering, so have pity on me. Um, and I have pity on. I'm gonna have pity on you because you're gonna have to deal with me. <laughs> I have painstakingly made a map that I will have be able to show you guys, the viewers at home, so that you can see what's going on. Um, and we have made custom little figurines that we can like move across the screen. Um, and I've written a story to kind of go along with the map. And the six players, presto uh, included, have all made their characters, which will be revealed the night of the campaign. Um, so yes, come join us, watch, hang out. Like I said, this is the last event of the April Adventures, but if the D&D campaign stream does really well, it is written and designed and set up to be an ongoing saga that we can continue to stream for your viewing pleasure. Say hi to little Bean! Hi, Bean! Hi! hi. Why are you still up? You should be in bed. <laughs> a fairy come. Oh, a fairy came. Okay, interesting. <laughs> I can hear him hearing me and talking back outside. <laughs> so, yes, transitioning from the April adventures, moving on to our next topic. Um, Dem RPGs. RPGs, RPGs being the, the theme of the night. Now, uh, before we proceed, ahead. before we proceed, we need to make uh, an important distinction because they... Ah, Martin, I could do a reoccurring NPC then. Oh, we might have some... We might yes. have We might have guest spots. We might have one-shot nights that we do. We might have branching campaigns. Uh, we, were, we were very surprised by the amount How of much? interest that we got. I thought it was going to be hard to get enough people to play, and it turns out yeah. we were like, we basically had to like cap it and be like, we can't take any more people. This is going to be a hot mess. I like the idea of having some some fans come in to be guest NPCs that can I like it create create a side story for them for you guys to like go through. Ooh, yeah, this is exciting. Martin, put it put it in the Discord. We'll give you the role to get into the D and D. Uh, chat, chat area chat. so you can stay on yeah, the radar there's a, private, there's a private chat that only people who have access to through a different role so i'll, I'll jump into discord uh let me know it's you and we'll, we'll the, add you only the bravest adventurers can delve into the depths of discord and we can definitely toy with that idea i, I like that idea that sounds like a lot of fun um so important distinction because there's a lot of rpgs that we're going to talk about that a lot of people are going to be like is that an RPG? Is it not an RPG? So, there are RPGs, Final Fantasy, Pokemon, traditional RPGs. I guess Pokemon's not the best example of that, but it's still an RPG. Um, but yeah, Final Fantasy, Baldur's Gate, like, there's a lot of turn-based RPGs, stuff like that. Action RPGs, or ARPGs, are things like Diablo, Minecraft Dungeons, basically any game that is a combination of an action style game, so think like Devil May Cry type things, um, that has RPG elements. So like Mario 64, Banjo-Kazooie, Donkey Kong 64, those would not be action RPGs, those are just action. Um... Monster Hunter is, uh, uh, it's like right, it's like right there, right? Because uh, traditionally when somebody says action RPG, I think Diablo. I think isometric action RPG, Minecraft Dungeons, my dog making weird noises. Um, that's what I think. But for the purposes of this episode, we are going to be a little bit more liberal with the term action RPG by including some maybe more RPG-inspired games or games with RPG elements versus, like, a true action RPG. So, disclaimer. I've been disclaimed. Um, 
Corporal, what's one of your favorite RPGs of all time? The one... Because I like RPGs. This is probably the first thing on the list. One of the most well-renowned, well-respected, released the most amount of times ever. Um, (laughs) And I have never touched it. I'm going to... I'm going to say this really loud for those in the back. <laughs> <laughs> the best and the single-handedly most released RPG game that has drawn the most amount of players in and has been created across the most amount of platforms is Skyrim. Downright, Skyrim has been the tip of the spear as far as RPGs game, games go. There's not a gamer out there who does not know of the Skyrim series. I would put Skyrim series on par with the Zelda series. Everyone knows it. I have somehow managed to never play it. You have never played it, but you know it. I know it. Fudos Ra. I know plenty <laughs> about it. I've never played it. You just said Fudos Ra, that's funny. I used to be a gamer like you, and then I took an arrow to the knee. Which would not actually stop me from gaming. Um, Yeah, Skyrim is the quintessential... I don't know if I would call it a modern RPG, because it's hella old at this point. (laughs) Oh, I I sent you a link in our channel, um, but Steam just released the... uh, the original uh, uh, Skyrim El- Elder Scrolls uh, games, mm, like yeah. the the Doom two pixel D- uh, games, yes. for free. Ugly. Uh, well, I'm not gonna start with those because they ugly. <laughs> I might play Skyrim at some point in my life. It's worth playing. If I'm stuck, just... if I'm stuck on a desert island, <laughs> and I only have Skyrim, I'll play it. Skyrim I mean, is like the measuring stick. Yeah. The amount of hours that you can throw into a Skyrim game, you could last a lifetime just playing that. Get your gate. I, I've seen some ridiculous, ridiculous feats. Like, people are like, I filled this entire tavern with. Jeremy, thank you for liking the stream. NPCs. And welcome, Mr. Hey, hey, welcome, Jeremy. Um. Yeah, there's Jeremy, a lot. you just missed us talking about the D and D campaign that's going to happen on Saturday. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Jeremy's in there. Yes. Jeremy is in there. I can't reveal anything about his character, so I won't. Um, Manolito Alpano. Hey, Manolito. I butchered your name, but welcome. In. How? <laughs> what? How you. have you stolen my notifications yet again? I'm using OBS. You're using Streamlabs. I have no idea. I'm I don't using know. another program altogether. And you're streaming to Twitch. Yes. So I'm how do you have stream. my alerts? I don't know. They're gone. I'm getting none of them. <laughs> I I am not. I'm not even using the same program, and I'm not even streaming to the right platform. Yet I have the notifications for your stream. Where? I, huh? I, Just kidding. Looking forward to Saturday. <laughs> you're gonna have to you're gonna have to roll better on deception to get that one past us <laughs> um get your dice warmed up uh another beloved rpg that we have to talk about is final fantasy uh and that's not Uh-oh. really a game so much as a state of mind these days <laughs> um final fantasy 7 my all-time favorite um i also wanted to put this in there as, I mean, World of Warcraft, also beloved RPG, MMO. Um, but Final Fantasy uh, Realm Reborn, the online the MMO, Final Fantasy XIV, yeah. is, like, still, like, absolutely killing it. They got a bunch of awards. They had to stop selling subscriptions to the game yep. because... Too many people were joining in droves that the servers were getting bogged down. Yeah, uh-oh, Martin says he couldn't hear Corporal on Twitch. No, really? We're going to have to test it. 
Oh no, I bet you I know why. Is it your fancy new software? It is. I bet you it is. Oh no. You fancy new software. Uh oh. I don't think we're live on Twitch right now. We definitely Oh we are, are live. We are live. That's weird. Anywho. Um yeah, Final Fantasy, definitely a modern staple. Uh that's I think that comes to mind first. I spent so many hours in the golden saucer. Bum 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 ba na 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 Jeremy, I know that song. So I never played Final Fantasy back when everyone else played Final Fantasy, but I would sit on a swivel chair next to Presto while he showed me everything. I was going to say, you basically played through it because you watched me play through it. Not to mention that, when certain things happened and certain people died, I would get a phone call at 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock at night being, Is Jason there? I need to talk to him. I'm in the game! <laughs> <laughs> From getting the muscle belt in the arena to snowboarding? Oh. That muscle belt was a pain in the ass. Pain Martin, in the ass. I tried fixing the, the Twitch audio. Let me know if it it's came came through. Um, here's a question. Is Zelda an RPG? Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> I... What, did this, what does the Google say? Google doesn't know either. There's an article on NintendoLife.com saying, is Zelda an RPG or not? Let's face it, Zelda sure looks and feels like an RPG. Yes, it is. It sh- sure does. It Chat, does... is Zelda an RPG? <sighs> it's an adventure RPG. I mean, Reddit is saying, no, it's not. It's an action-adventure game. You solve puzzles <sighs> through action and gameplay. Mm. I will make you guys feel young. First RPG video game I liked was Gateway to App Shop. I don't know that one. Is Zelda an RPG? Oh. I don't know. There's there's some light RPG elements, but there's no stats to level. There's no visible damage numbers. Right? Yeah. I don't know. Gateway to Apsia is like... Like an original Zelda, like Game Boy t- style game. Like the little... What was it? What system? There. What system was it for? Uh... Computer. Atari. Computer. 8-bit family. Oh, Commodore nice. 64. 8-bit Atari, 8-bit, and a Commodore 64. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah, so OG for o- real. OG, yeah. Um, oh, nice. And an Intellivision. Nice. I do feel young. I feel my youth. I feel <laughs> my feel youth. Young. I feel my youth returning to me. <laughs> um, so, is Zelda an RPG? Maybe. Maybe it is. Um... Is Monster Hunter an RPG? Monster Hunter is more of an RPG because of the character customization and building and leveling that you can do for your character than Zelda would be. I would I would say so. I would say. What do you guys think? Chat is is Monster Hunter an RPG? I would say that's an action RPG. Yeah, it's definitely full of yeah. action. But. I mean... See, this is why I was like the disclaimer of, like, action RPG. That term... Lady Sage, I can hear Lady Sage in the other room rolling her eyes at my my, my (laughs) speaking of Skyrim. Because 
I, as far as she's concerned, have not truly played Skyrim. I have turned Skyrim on, and then I have gone into the world and collected things, and brought them back to my house and organized them into chests. I'm an inventory whore. So, (laughs) I have have spent a lot of... I spent a lot of time being encumbered and slowly walking back to town so I can unleash all the things that I have been You're collected. a hoarder. That's exactly how <laughs> you play D&D, too. Yes. <laughs> so, with, with that being said, like, true, like, RPG, like Skyrim, there's so much more that you can do. There's so many things that you can, like, adventure down in different paths and yeah, it's a deep change, RPG. Whatnot. It's proper RPG. Whereas Monster Hunter and Zelda do not provide that diversity. So they're, they fall under a, a, an RPG like category, but are they a true RPG? I'm going to say no. But if you, have, if you have a category of action-adventure... I think Zelda more cleanly fits under action yes. adventure than it is an RPG, and I think Monster Hunter straddles <sighs> the line between RPG and action, not adventure, because adventure implies story heavy, which Monster Hunter yeah. is not. Monster Hunter is not. Yeah. Um, well, with that being said, taking this to a modern day and age, Elden Ring. Where would you fall, Elden Ring? Elden the Ring is the new standard. <laughs> for RPGs. There is a very common video that's going, or a very popular video, excuse me, that's going around on YouTube that I've seen, like, shared on a lot of Facebook groups that Elden Ring has changed RPGs moving forward. Elden Ring... I, we could do the, a whole episode on Elden Ring. For the record, I made the exact same claim about Breath of the Wild and how that's open world and vastness and a standard for what most games will be moving forward and they did it with pokemon and i find that more open world games are becoming a lot more popular now maybe i was right but yeah i I don't know the story behind final fantasy actually if there is a story there's a story martin said do you guys know the story behind final fantasy name oh the name I said no, no I, don't. I don't. I do not know. Um, I think, in terms of scope and depth, Elden Ring has set a new standard, and I think Breath of the Wild Two had an oh shit moment before they delayed it. Looking at Elden Ring, being like, <laughs> everybody says Elden Ring is the Breath of the Wild of Dark Souls, but now. Breath of the Wild 2 needs to be able to compete with Elden Ring, and it you probably can't. can't. <laughs> Although, Jeremy, if yet again, if you guys are in Discord and you're following our general chat, Jeremy had talked about how uh, Breath of the Wild 2 has been built up so large that they're having a hard time fitting it onto a Nintendo Switch, so now they need to figure out how to either trim it or compress it in order to release it. Now, I haven't seen any more articles about that, but, like, that's an interesting thought. Like, how much did they add to it? This is a game that started as a DLC that has gotten to that size? Like, that's interesting. Yeah, it'll be it'll be interesting for sure to see, like, what happens with it. Because there's so much mm-hmm. speculation and there's such lack of details and it's so, like... I feel like everybody's holding their breath for Breath of the Wild 2, and now that everybody's played Elden Ring, it almost somehow inadvertently put more hype and pressure behind Breath of the Wild 2. Yeah. Uh, so, but Elden Ring's a tough act to follow. You did not get it yet, right? Correct. It's the one game that Lady Sage has always been like, oh, I think I want to play that game because it's so much like Skyrim. And it, that's is, it is... It is... It's a deep end. It's a pool, and it's the pool. The whole pool is eight feet deep. There's no it, stairs. There's no like small section, yeah. and uh, 
Um, I'm going to lose my fiance to, to, to Elden Ring here. <laughs> Breath of the Wild is what made Elden Ring what it is open world games because Elden Ring has made so much, so many strides on what an RPG can do, and now Breath of the Wild 2 has more pressure, yeah. Uh, Final Fantasy was supposed to be the final game Enix was making before closing. <gasps> really interesting. So it, like, saved the studio, basically. Interesting. That is very That's cool. It's so weird to hear just Enix and not Square Enix. Yep, yep. Um uh, so I mean th there's a a plunder that's in our recent history that we can't left go unnoticed in it's... the RPG realm. It's a game that you were rolling in the mud about. And I still really like it. And that is a cyberpunk 2077. Um, which is funny that we're talking about this because I started, uh, I just started rewatching uh, Blade Runner 2049, which is like the most cyberpunk movie ever. Yep. Um, oh yeah, that's that's super cool. Martin, load up the first Final Fantasy and you will just see the name Enix. Um, yeah, Cyberpunk 2077 uh, was supposed to be... So, here's a perfect, perfect comparison. Cyberpunk was supposed to do what Elden Ring did. That's yes. how it was hyped up. When they marketed Cyberpunk, they said Cyberpunk is going to change the game with depth and quest design and world building and... They hyped up Cyberpunk exactly the way that Elden Ring ended up executing. Cyberpunk, as we all now know, sort of fell flat on its face. Many, many, many things were either over-exaggerated or straight-up fabricated. Um, huge, massive failure at launch. One of the only high-profile titles to have sort of a a carte blanche refund policy it got pulled off the PlayStation 4. There's a lot of, there's a lot of stuff around yeah. that. That, um, that was a, a blunder in it, and a half. It has been balanced and added to and tweaked and this and that to the state it's in now is like almost the bare minimum that was sort of promised. Um, and I went back and started messing around with it. But I'm like halfway through the campaign. All my talent points are reset. I don't remember anything about my build. And now I have to like do it all over again. So I do want to get back into Cyberpunk. It's an amazing, amazing game. The city, everything, the architecture. If for nothing else, play Cyberpunk for getting to explore around the city. It is the single best video game city that I've ever been able to explore. I will give it that. Night City is the best video game city, period. Um, what was the first RPG game that got us interested in the genre? Final, Fa Joe. definitely Final Fantasy VII. Well, hmm, probably. I am going to share a link to you in the chat, uh, just for. You know, argument's sake. Uh, <laughs> that is see. not an RPG. You are a character who builds a, 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 a mech, who has to upgrade your mech, and you have to attack your enemies, and you get to see their damage. So, I mean, my gaming history started on the Sega. So you got Sonic, you've got Home Alone, and you've got Echo Dolphin. Right, that that's where I was at. Yeah. And then I got the Gateway PC and I played the Gateway. The Gateway Did you remember the Gateway store and everything was like cow patterns? Cow. Yep. It was I got my so first gateway weird. computer came in a cow printed box. The nineties yep. was weird, guys. <laughs> and so I I played a lot of things on the Gateway, uh, and that's where I got Battlezone uh <laughs> Yeah. I got I got uh Battlezone Red Odyssey and then I got um Star Siege. 
Uh, and then I went over to Xbox and played Halo. So, like, there's that. Um, there was, like, a ghost over here or something. Star, <laughs> Star Siege was more of, like, a simulation. A like, a mech a, yeah, game, right? It was a mech simulation. That's the closest thing that I, I had in my youth to RPG. Okay. Yeah, Final Fantasy VII was definitely it for me. Um, I did also play a little yeah, game. I, I got into Zelda much later in my gaming life, and like I naturally was hooked. Uh, it was before high school, maybe entering middle school is when I got into Zelda. So, I also got into a little game called Golden Sun for the Game Boy. Game Boy Advance? I think it was Game Boy Advance. Golden Sun was another was another big one that I really really enjoyed and I will be playing through again if the the Nintendo uh, Game Boy Advance leak was true. What was the first Zelda game that you played? Ocarina of Time. Oh really? Yep. Because you're I was uh, you could, I... could have been Ocarina of Time could have been Link to the Past. It may have been linked to the past. It probably was linked to the past, but I don't remember like having a love for the the series until Ocarina of Time, and then I went retroactively back and played the other ones. So, yeah, I had I had linked to the past on that Game Boy right there um, before I had Ocarina of Time. I think. But I didn't. I played it, and I was like, "Ah, oh, this is all right." And then Ocarina of Time, obviously, amazing. Um, that's a good question, though. The first, mm. the first RPGs. Yeah. That, I feel like I have really come to appreciate RPGs in the last couple of years because now I'm old. And I want to be able to play a game and make incremental progress. So I find myself drawn to games that have RPG elements to it. Tiny Tina's RPG yeah. leveling elements. Um, Monster Hunter RPG leveling elements. Like I find like most games that I like need to have some sort of RPG stuff going on. Um, even some of the roguelikes uh, that I play, like uh, like Hades, RPG Elements, um, what was the other one? Uh, Have a Nice Death has some, that's not, oh, I didn't get super, super into that, but, um, so, yeah, now, since we are best the Nintendo RPG, best RPGs on the Switch. On the, the Switch. Nintendads. On oh my god my console oh my console's downstairs because the kids were playing it on the TV downstairs. I was well, like, well, I my have mine. Here. I got mine. But Don't what worry. are the best best RPGs on the Nintendo Switch? Since we are the Nintendads and we are a Switch loving family, oh I the, the only one that's on this list that I'm going to even I don't know if you can say that third one, but okay, uh, Pokemon. Uh, is not a true RPG. Uh, not I mean, uh, the Pokemans that you the control. The Pokemans. The Pokemans that you control are RPG elements, but you, as the player, Ash or whatever, isn't really an RPG. You can. You have a party. RPG. Your party. You have a party of your six party. characters, and those are your Pokemon. <laughs> Oh, okay, okay, okay. Pokemon is absolutely an RPG, right? Sure. Guys? Sure. Chat, back <laughs> me up here. Back me up here. Is Pokemon an, an RPG? RPG? To begin with, RPG stands for role-playing game, gaming genre, blah, 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 blah. As a typical of the genre, the Pokemon RPGs featured involves it. RPG feature is involved in the stories. You're role playing are... a Pokemon trainer. Sure, sure. Um, Pokemon. 
I did Maybe see I did see the recommendation. Genre. I did see the recommendation for Xenoblade Chronicles, which I've almost played several times. I rented it from the library once and then something else came out. So I, I have wanted to get into Xenoblade Chronicles and every single time I do, I am like I think about which series which one to buy or which one to get into. I'm a story whore when it comes to video games, so I want to know everything. So either I have to go back and replay the originals, there is like a daunting amount of information when it comes to Xenoblade uh, series, so I've just stayed away. Just jump in. Just jump in with number three, Corporal. Do it. We'll watch you stream <laughs> it. We will support you. And Jeremy, uh, yes, uh, Octopath Traveler is on our list as some of the best RPGs on the Nintendo Switch. Yes. I've heard a lot of great things about I've that. heard lots of good things about Octopath Traveler. I think it popularized that, like, toy camera style. You know what I mean? Where it kind of looks yeah. like everything's sort of, like, you know, blurry, out of focus. It's got sort of a cozy vibe. Um, and you have your little pixel characters, and they run around. I've also wanted to play Octopath Traveler. I'm not... I like action RPGs. I am less of a fan of traditional, like, turn-based, you know, class jobs. If um, I could build an entire D&D campaign using the art style of Octopath Traveler with, like, oh the the camera angle... You like, never... The I mean, there is RPG Maker. There's a game on Steam called RPG Maker that you could theoretically do that. I, I, that You'd never cool. see the light of day again. You'd have to no. quit your job, no. lock yourself in. I would sit in this room with nothing but a pair of boxers on and a, like a 12-pack of Mountain Dew and just like disappear for a month. Yes, Chrono Cross. Yes, Chrono Cross is also... I meant to add it to the list, but it's not out yet. Yeah, Chrono Cross is coming. Um, tr Triangle Strategy. I'm going to laugh every time I say that name for the rest of my life. Because <laughs> they were supposed to... They even said, like, Triangle Strategy, like... Working title. T working title. And then they're just like, screw no, it. It's called Triangle it. Strategy. You got a problem with it? With, Go play Octopath Traveler. On. What that was was, this is a working title. We'll find something better. Now, you know what? We're not even going like, to waste our time. Working title, more like this title works. Send it. <laughs> Ship it. Um, yeah, I've heard Triangle Strategy is really good, though, if you like like tactical you know what it was? RPGs. They didn't want to spend any more money on their PR budget, so they were just like, Yeah, they were like, Ship. we have so many, we have so much materials that say Triangle Strategy. We can't afford to redo them. Just, yep. just do it. Um, Ship it. Super Mario RPG. Not available on the Switch, I don't think. Yeah. Um, but we got to shout it out. Nintendo ads. We can't have an RPG episode without mentioning. Uh, Paper Mario, though. Paper Mario is an RPG. Let's a go. Let's a go. It's um, me, Mario. Oh God. <laughs> um. Yeah. So Paper Paper Mario is another good one. That is on the Switch? I'm sorry. I'm dying. Um, you need to have a Mountain Dew. Uh, I need to have <laughs> another coffee is what I need. What I wish need I wish I just had a... I, just, I wish I had a bottle that had unending <laughs> coffee in it that I could just pull out whenever I wanted. Where's my bottle? I'm gonna, gonna roll for Presto's Endurance here. Oh. Sorry, you got a four. You're not gonna last. You're not rolling for me. Excuse me. Excuse me. That's so rude. That's so rude. Roll I also four. rolled a four. Told you. <laughs> Good night. Presto is going to Good night, y'all. That, that's Let's... ridiculous. That's ridiculous <laughs> that that just happened live on stream. <laughs> I can't believe the chances of that happening are grossly low. Yes. Yes. Anywho, Fire Emblem is another great game. Fire Emblem. So Fire Emblem is super interesting to me because I was introduced to the Fire Emblem series at like two o'clock in the morning. Oh gosh. Playing Super Smash Brothers. And I unlocked this swordsman with a girl haircut and his name was Marth. 
And I was like, is that short for Martha? Like, what? <laughs> was this a translation? Is this a localization error? Is his name Mark? And somebody had a lisp and it was like, Marth? Um, but I so. A girl named Martha once. The first. Did you really? Yeah. yeah. She unfortunately died of cancer. Bless her heart. But she. Her name was Martha. It's the only Martha I've ever known in my life. Okay. Great. <laughs> cool. Thanks for that story. So, Fire Emblem's first appearance to Western audiences was Marth and Roy in Super Smash Brothers Melee. Um, uh, and there was no there was no Fire Emblem games that had been released outside of Japan at that point. And people were like, the "Air out of the room." What is this? What is this thing? Um, what is this Fire Emblem series? And then some of them got brought over, kind of had a niche following. But then, Fire Emblem Three Houses for Switch sold like a bajillion copies. Got super popular. Martin, take care. We will see you on to Discord. Um, Peace, man. Uh, yeah, Fire Emblem has, funny enough, become a very, very popular series, even here in America, mostly thanks to, at first, Super Smash Brothers, um, but then, uh, no, there was one, there was one more that was really popular, um, with Lucina and Krom, and I can't remember the name of it, but the only reason I know those characters is also because of Super Smash Brothers. Um, but the, the most recent one, Three Houses, came out. Huge, huge success. Not really recently, but the most recent one. Um, and now they're doing the, the Warrior, the, the Fire Emblem Warriors spinoff um, in the Dynasty Warriors style thing. So that's also, that's also a huge, huge thing for Switch. Um, I'm sure there's a million other RPGs on the Switch that... We are not are lost that are lost and hidden inside of the eShop that is the <laughs> most junk drawer garbage of an eShop that has ever been created. Well let's see. Let's just see. Let's do a live let's do a live demo in the eShop. What comes up first for RPGs? Because I made my list and Xenoblade. Xeno we've talked we've talked a million times about Xenoblade, but Xenoblade's also on the Switch. We've that's the thing. I don't think we ever officially said it. Um, let's see. If we search... Can you search by genre? You should be able to. This is this is the ongoing drama of the eShop, right? Is you can't find the things that you want to find. Oh, genre. Here we go. So, if I search the eShop... It's probably how we should have made the notes for this episode. So, if you go in the eShop... There's a communication, education, fighting, first-person shooter. There's first-person shooter. There's first-person shooter games. Here's a question uh, to keep to keep you busy while uh, while I go through this very slow loading eShop. Is Animal Crossing an RPG? Ooh. Is... You're not you're not upgrading your character. You do. You upgrade slots, you upgrade equipment. You upgrade how much money you can hold, you upgrade your house. You do upgrade your your character. I oh. Don't know the same there effect. is there is a criminal there is a criminal thing. Tell us. This tell is us. messed up. So, RPG is a... Speaking of Animal Crossing, there's a free-to-play Disney version coming this summer. What? Nice. Jeremy, well, I that's, need a link. That's link ridiculous. We need to talk about this. So, there's no, there's no way. Oh, because these are free. Uh, release date, relevance. I guess we'll, we'll sort by bestsellers. According to the eShop... The best-selling game, the best-selling RPG, which is free, um, Sky, 
Children of the Light. I've never heard of that. The no, Elder yes. Scrolls Blades is number two. Interesting. Number three makes me so angry. It's Dauntless, the Monster Hunter oh, spinoff. That is not an RPG. Number four. Well, if Monster Hunter is an RPG, Dauntless is an RPG. Fine. The fact that it appears over Monster Hunter, though, makes me salty. Uh, Delta Rune, chapters one and two. That's uh, Undertale. That's definitely. Die is available on the Switch, on the iPhone, on the Android, and on children's tablets. What is? Sky. Oh, okay. Um, Pokemon Legends Arceus, of course. Um, Skyrim. Fallout Shelter. Fallout. There's an RPG. That's. That's. Fallout, maybe an RPG. But not but Fallout, Fallout Shelter. Fallout Shelter. Come no. on. Um, close your, your, your eShop. Here's a, here's a familiar face. DC Universe Online listed oh. under there. Spellbreak. The Battle Royale. The Mage Ooh, Battle it, Royale is an RPG, apparently. Okay, it's not. Get, I, I'm, I'm done listening. Stardew Valley, World of Tanks, Blitz. See, this is why we constantly take shots at the eShop. Because the it, e -shop is, is garbage. it is categorically wrong. Just shut that down. Naruto, Shippuden, Ultra, Assassin's Creed. That's closer is, to an uh, RPG, though. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's there we go. Triangle RPG. Strategy. This is... This is a pretty terrible representation of of RPGs. Um, the last and final subject for tonight, and the side quest that is going to end this episode, is what class would you be in real life? Now, I assume by class we are referring to, like, D&D &D classes. So the the traditional, to, yeah... Like a bard, a barbarian, a warlock, a wizard, a witch, a druid, a fighter, a, a swordsman, like those types of classes? Yes. Okay. So what class would you... How about this? Let's make it even more interesting. What class would you be, and then what class do you think I would be? And I'll... I have been same. told... On numerous occasions, that I am a bull in a china shop. When there is something large and there is something massive that needs to be broken, destroyed, or moved, they ask for me to handle it. So, because of that, I have the viewpoint that I am very much a barbarian. We've had this conversation, but we're going to yes. have it again here. So, if you are a bi our barbarian... That would mean you spend most of your time leveling up your most important stat, which is strength. So how many times how many times a week, maybe how many times a day who's, do you hit the gym? Who says, who says that I have to spend all of my time leveling up that stat? Why can't I just be naturally capable of having it? I don't need to level it up. It just is there. So you're a level one barbarian. Sure. Permanently stuck at level one. <laughs> you guys would make good Kender rogues. Ooh, Kender. I know rogues, but I don't know Kender rogue. Interesting. So I would say I would say you could pass as a fighter because fighters are more technique based versus raw strength, and that I could see. Because think okay. about it: what you do in your day to day job, what are you doing? You are defeating creatures. Not through brute strength, but through specific techniques, yes? Sure. Yeah, okay. So you're so a fighter. As a real-life human, you would put me into a fighter class. I would say fighter, yes. Right? Fine. Sure. Okay. Maybe. I don't know. So you would be some... You would be... Some sort of fighter, brawler. Something in that something. that category. Okay, I agree with that. What what do you think I would be? Literally 
actually looking at the classes on D and D Beyond right now. I have, is, I have two. There, I have two ideas. There oh, is a class that's on Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. It's a. It's an oh. expanded. Now we're uh, getting class. complicated. It's called the Artificer. Artificer. Oh yeah, the Artificer. Yeah. Yeah, Masters of Invention, artifacts uses in ingenuity and magic to unlock extraordinary abilities and objects. I think that would be you. Artificer. I could I could see it. I could see it. Oh, Kender is a race of halflings. I knew a couple of brothers that played Kender rogues. They had sticky fingers. They were trapped in a cursed castle. Every night they would have left to check the bag. Oh. Interesting. <laughs> That's cool. Um so I would put myself my instinct says sorcerer because I rely on my innate instincts Inherent magic and innate and ability. Because first and foremost, I went to school for writing and writing and sort of communicating and explaining things has always been a strong point for me. I remember being in so therefore you would be a bard. Well, that was my second thing, but listen. So, in elementary school, I would always try and talk my way out of trouble, but usually into trouble. Um, and my teachers would always be like, you're either going to be a lawyer or a comedian. And that is very much based, it's a charisma-based, charisma yep. stat, definitely. Um, and it relies on, like, your inherent ability to do stuff. Um, so... But also Bard, because Bard is, you know, entertainment, support, stuff like that. However, if I, if I, I think I lack the artistry of a Bard, because I'm not a musician. If I was a musician, then I'd be a Bard. But I'm not a musician, so I don't think I can necessarily be a Bard. I think Sorcerer would be more apropos because I rely on my innate abilities to cast things because I work in marketing, right? All my marketing campaigns are basically spells, right? I'm using my a lot of my innate abilities and techniques to weave things together and then pff, cast for effect, which is technology-based, so it might be more uh, artificer. So... I don't know. Somewhere somewhere in the caster class tree, for sure. What are you doing? You look so nefarious. I look nefarious? You look like you're up to something. I'm always up to something. Roll a deception check. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to roll it. If you roll low, you have to tell me exactly what you're doing. Um, What'd you roll? 17! All right, now you're innocent. You're free to go. <laughs> um, also, Wizards of the Coast bought D&D &D Beyond. Yes. Yes. Uh, our chat bot is broken tonight. We don't know why. We don't know Roll why. Roll D20. It's, it's worked for every stream. I think it has something to do that we're both using software that we logged in because my notifications aren't working and i suspect that's why the chat bot is also not working i, I doesn't make sense to me but we'll have to it doesn't it make out. sense to me either but it's facebook nothing has to make sense <clears throat> um i think that is our show um yeah that's all of our notes thank you for tuning in make sure you tune in this saturday 9 p.m eastern standard time for our adventures, what's the campaign called, Corporal? The Threads Between. Oh, the Threads Between. Mysterious. Nobody knows. <laughs> Preston the Rapping Bard. Yes. So, yes. so, when I was creating my character, I considered it. <laughs> I... I considered it. You I consider I considered Bard and I considered having to freestyle because I am good at coming up with rhymes on the fly just to get by. Um 
I was considering doing that and having to wrap a bar every time, uh, every time I did Bardic Inspiration, which is essentially every single oh, turn. I straight out told him that if he was going to do a, a bard, I was going to make him sing all of his spells. I cast Bardic Inspiration. Artificial amateurs aren't at all amazing analytically. I assault animate things. There. Take your dice. Maybe a future campaign. It could happen. It could happen. It's close to grog time. Bernie, you're late to the show, man. Grog! The grog, the grog time starts when the stream starts. Actually, it's almost grog part two time. Anyway, that is our show. Vicious mockery. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I might. I might. Well, I can't. I can't say anything. But vicious oh. Mike. Vicious mockery might be in the cards for our campaign in the future. Uh, cheers, Bernie. Is in the cards coming in our campaign in the future. Okay. Not saying anything more than that. Um, Jeremy, thanks for hanging out. Uh, Bernie, thanks for hanging out. Everybody, thanks for hanging out. We will see you on Saturday. Saturday. Tune in on Saturday. That's our D&D campaign where I will be voice acting and running a campaign and presto, maybe voice acting and playing a character. I am going to be oh, voice man. acting. I'm voice acting my character. My character has an accent. It is, it, the accent is important to his backstory but maybe not in the way that you think. So, <laughs> tune in on Saturday to see us make a fool of ourselves. Yes, along with five other people. Yes. So, we'll see you then. Peace out, everybody. Have a good night. <laughs>